This is also why their little slave to freedom still does not work. Because we clearly see the strength of Eren's resolve and conviction. The will strong enough to break the chains of paths. If Eren's determination to reach his goals was this unyielding, and he gained the powers of a god, he would have completed the rumbling 100%. Regardless of how many of his friends die, he would have kept moving forward. So Eren's will and agency had to be severely reduced, if not upright removed, in order for the Alliance to win. Make him stupid. An idiot. Make it so his mind was messed up by the Founding Time powers. And there you go, now Eren can be defeated. Then bend the narrative backwards more. Falco gained the ability to fly and learned how to do so in an unreasonably small amount of time. Given that Eren had all the Titan powers through the Founder, and he had the Titan power for longer, he should have also been able to fly. But that would make Eren unkillable, so you have to forget about that. The Warhammer Titan and its Crystal Link making its user safe in battle? But that would drag the battle out, and you have to end the story at the special number of 139. And what else? What about the Alliance? Did Armin live up to the role of Erwin as commander? No, Levi was the one commanding. Because the moment the battle started, Armin's hesitation got him dragged and gagged. Did the Alliance win by their own merit? Through strategy and tactics? Uh, no, it was given to them by the story. Because Eren was impossible to kill. How so? All the previous Titan Shifters in history, yet not a single Alliance member dies. Previous Titan Shifters helping the Alliance, conveniently only the ones the readers knew, including the people that would have actually allowed Eren to complete the rumbling. For example, Kruger helping the Alliance does not make sense given that he sacrificed his own Eldian people for the sake of the greater good of Eldia. Chapter 88, Kruger says, I cut off the fingers of thousands of subjects of Ymir. Thousands. I took them here and turned them into titans. Women and children, too. I believe I did it all to serve Eldia. Chapter 88, Kruger says, I swore to get revenge on Marley and to restore Eldia. But to do that, I had to take the fingers of the people I wanted to protect. To skin them alive. To kick them down from here and turn them into titans. If he had to sacrifice Eldians of the outside world for the Eldians in parody to live, otherwise all Eldians die, so be it. Chapter 89, Kruger says, if the Founding Titan falls into Molly's hands, they will no longer have any use for the Eldians in the Interman Zone, spelling the end for all Eldians, whether on this island or on the continent. Kruger would have allowed the rumbling to finish. Grisha, it suggested that Eren showed him a memory of the future that made him change his mind and give Eren his powers. Was the scenery this one? But Eren's genocide was the reason Grisha asked Zeke to stop him in the first place, so it had to be something else. And the most obvious thing would be Eldia's freedom, the second scenery. I'll talk about that later, but this would mean that these two restorationists would have gotten the result they wanted had Eren just completed the entire rumbling. And this isn't even talking about their specific titan. Chapter 88, Kruger says, In every era, this titan has always moved ahead, seeking freedom. It has fought on for freedom. Its name is the Attack Titan. These Attack Titan shifters, whose titan always fought for freedom, now fought for the outside world who were going to take Eldi's freedom away. Kruger and Grisha were fighting for the freedom of the Eldian people, not the freedom of the outside world. It's selfish, but that's the point. It's like how Eren was selfish, destroying the outside world instead of letting them destroy his people. So Kruger and Grisha should not have joined the Alliance here. They should have actually been on Eren's side to the bitter end. Moving on, Freckled Ymir had faith that his story would be safe inside the walls because of Eren's powers. So why would Freckled Ymir stop Eren? Letting him complete the 100% rumbling would have secured the island's future and guaranteed his story a safety. What else? Uh, oh yes, Zeke dies in the rumbling stops, which means Eren no longer had the founding titan powers, yet he still turned into the colossal titan. A titan he didn't have. So that means that Eren still had the founding titan powers. Which means killing Zeke should not have stopped the rumbling. But it still did, because Isiyama needed the alliance to win. But let's not just focus on Zeke, let's look at the colossal titans themselves. Chapter 89 Kruger says, They are now being used to cage in the Eldians on this island, preventing them from freely venturing past the walls. So long as the Founding Titan does not control them, they cannot follow any complex orders. However, once they are set loose, they become fearless and automatic tools of mass slaughter. 
We might say that this quote was only referring to the small mindless titans, but the colossal titans in the walls were also mindless titans. This means that the colossal titans, once the founding titan lost control over them, should not have stopped. After being set loose, they should have started eating everybody. But they didn't, because Isayama needed the alliance to win. What else? Have Mikasa and Ackerman gain memories from Eren, then have her somehow know that Eren is in the mouth. Because if Mikasa does not get this information, then the Alliance would not have been able to kill Eren. If the reason she got this information was due to this memory, then killing Eren was only possible because of the memory manipulation retcon. See what I mean? It was impossible for Eren to lose, so you had to bend the narrative for him to lose. Even with their slave to freedom, he should not have lost. So you had to make Eren stupid. If he had steeled his resolve, you had to break it. If he had an iron will, you had to melt it. Just for the alliance to win. That's how strong Eren's character was. I'll relate it back to chapter 97. If his future memories were his own free will, then his will would make him go 100%. An external source would be needed to change that outcome to 80%. Oh, okay. So this extreme case of determinism stripped him of his agency and free will. Chapter 97. So he was not moving of his own free will. He was moving forward because of this something. That external source is the founder Ymir. Chapter 25. What happened to Eren being a true monster? that no one can force him to submit. But okay, his defeat was due to Ymir wanting to see Mikasa's choice. Because this showed Ymir that she could move on from loving her abusive tyrannical king. Even though Mikasa doesn't really move on. But it was Mikasa? Okay then, why was it Mikasa? Only Ymir knows. That's crazy. 2000 years and she couldn't find a more compatible Eldian. King Fritz and Eren weren't even alike. Oh, but Mikasa wasn't the parallel to Ymir, she was her antithesis, she, she did something that Ymir couldn't. Yeah, okay, if the criteria for Ymir being freed was this selfless act, then Historia is still better written than Mikasa. Because Historia already did this in the Uprising arc when she rebelled against her father and chose to kill him. Better, because Historia actually moved on unlike Mikasa. Better, because Historia was actually the one set up to be Ymir's parallel, not Mikasa. But I guess Isayama forgot everything about the Uprising arc. Make Eren stupid. Historia and his mother's words giving him the will to live? Gone. His mother being his entire motivation? Gone. Being born into this world? Gone. Like I said, make Eren stupid. Make him kill his mom. Make Dina ignore Bertolt and lead her towards Carla? Didn't think for a second that the better alternative would be to allow Dina to eat Bertolt so they could have a royal blooded titan with the powers of the Colossal. Another person with knowledge of the outside world? Oh, but Eren wanted to destroy the whole world. Once Grisha gets the founding titan, you would already have a titan of royal blood. The entire game was in the bag. Oh, but Carla was stuck in the rubble. She was doomed. Oh, that's nice, but Eren can control titans in the past. So he could have either stopped the entire attack on parody, or get Dina to pick Carla up from the rubble and debris. So why kill Carla? Was it for motivation? Eren stupid, he did not realize or forgot that he was already motivated before his mother died. Oh no, Isiam had to write Eren leading Dina to Carla because otherwise Dina would not have went to their house. Uh no, Isiyama did not need to do this. He already wrote a reason why Dina ignored Bertolt and walked straight to the house. Chapter 87, Dina says, Grisha, no matter what I become, don't worry, I'll find you. Because Dina made a promise to Grisha that she would find him before she became a titan, her titan prioritized finding Grisha. That's why she ignored Bertolt and went straight to Grisha's house and found Carla. Or don't tell me ending defender speed read through chapter 87 because it did not appeal to their slave to freedom. So what else? What other possible reason could there be for Eren to kill his mother? Besides shock value? Determinism. Use it like ending defenders do as an excuse for bad writing. It was always going to happen. They say that we did not understand the story, while they themselves did not understand that Eren killing his own mother was complete character assassination. Just because it's canon doesn't make it good. Ymir loving King Fritz is canon doesn't make it good. Now how does Eren killing his own mother plot twist relate back to Eren not being able to lose? Simple. If Eren could kill his own mother, the one he loved most of all, then he should have had no problem sacrificing his friends to reach his goal. 
But no, his character had to be turned into a plot device. In the Brutus magazine 2014, as you keep adding more characters, don't you ever find yourself slipping up and getting confused? I do tend to forget a lot of it, so I just go back and reread the manga. Given that Isiyama had the tendency to forget, it wouldn't be very outlandish to believe he forgot about Eren's character development. Because with how chapter 139 recontextualized the entire story, Eren was playing a character even in his own internal monologue. Did readers understand the story better than Isiyama? Brutus Magazine 2014 You ever forget the details of this world of your own creation as you concentrate on drawing it? Yeah, sometimes others know it better than the creator. People who criticized the ending understood that if Eren was still in character and not a plot device, he would have never given up because of his strong will and resolve. Ending defenders can argue all they want about their slave to freedom, and 80% rumbling was only possible by stripping Eren of his agency and free will, and twisting the narrative to fit. Because if Isiyama didn't change anything about Eren's character, their slave to freedom wouldn't have been so contradictory and actually completed the rumbling 100%. Yeah, their slave to freedom is still dumb because it was impossible for Eren to lose. And as always with slave to freedom, it always goes back to his disappointment line in chapter 131. 